Greetings and welcome back to some more stupidity with me and my uh, MGB. And this time, I've got a different problem. A while ago, there was a little bit of a mistake. I was doing some work on the car. Uh, I left a uh, I left a rag on top of the radiator, and I turned the ignition on, which turned the fan on, or fans at the time, turned the fans on, and uh, this fan here, this fan here collected the uh, the rag and the rag kind of got caught and stopped that from turning and I think in the process it damaged it because a couple of days later I noticed that that fan had stopped working and my car had started to overheat because it killed the other fan as well so once I figured that out I just disconnected it and just kind of ignored it like unhooking it seemed to fix the problem temporarily but now I'm starting to notice a little bit of issue because I'm driving backwards and forwards to work along a very very busy mo uh, motorway uh, and I'm surrounded by people who like to weave in and out of traffic and occasionally hit their brake light so you end up with uh, uh, big long backups so a 40 minute journey ends up taking two hours and the car does not like sitting stationary so I have to figure out what's happened to this fan and fix it all right so as we can see this fan is currently running this fan not so much. If I just touch it, I can kind of sort of feel it running, trying to run. I can feel the pulsing in the uh, engine, in the motor, but it's not actually turning. And I'm not going to get my fingers too far in there. That's what the stick is for. Because if it suddenly comes on, it's going to hurt. So I'm just going to... Yeah, I can feel a little bite there but it's not coming on and we can see uh, that it's not straight either. So that's... Looks like the, yeah, uh, looks like it burnt out a little bit. That's not good. <laughs> we don't want it to do that. This one, fine. This one, Looks like the bearings have gone out in the motor itself. So we'll have to do something about that. And to do that, I have to pull the entire radiator out so I can pull this forward and out. Joy. So all I've got to do is unhook this, unhook this, get the one at the bottom there and let it drain. And then there's just four bolts that hold the radiator in. And I've already got those loose. So yeah, let me go ahead and drain this. And it's actually, it's, it's okay anyway. I was planning to drain the radiator at some point because this has been leaking for the last couple of weeks. Um, this is like a self-tapping uh, bolt that goes into the top to close off this hole here. Because uh, this is like a generic performance radiator. It had a hole there, so I bought a packet of these. I think you get five in a packet. And it wasn't sealing properly, so I put some uh, high temp sealant around here and it seemed to stem a lot of the trouble. You can see there's still a little bit of leakage going on there. That's not great. But, um, yeah, what I, yeah, that's, it's actually quite greasy. That's also not good. Um, so, and I put some um, leak stop in here, so that should have been going around the system. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you, if you use a leak stop in your, uh, in your radiator and it does stop the leak, the best thing to do is just to drain it and replace it so that leak stop stops going around because it can clog up the uh, you do run the risk of it clogging up the uh, the water pump if you sit idle for too long anyway so let me go ahead and get this drained and we'll pull this out and we'll be able to get to our, our fan motor all right so we've got the coolant out into our little tub here and uh, one thing I will say is I don't like getting coolant all over my hands so I like to wear one half of a pair of marigolds, obviously on the hand that I'm going to use to grab the hose. The other thing is sometimes the hose will be uh, stuck in place and you can't pull it off. I like to use an old pair of these just to very gently get a purchase on the rubber hose and just give it a little twist to break it loose. And then you can just yank it right off. So we'll just let this drain out and then we'll pull the radiator out once we've got these other two hoses unhooked. Oh, there goes my pointy stick. 
Uh, yeah, once we've got these two hoses off, we'll just pull those out and we'll be good to go with the radiator. All right, so I've got all those bolts loose. There's the bottom set there. And I've put the top set up here. Um, so at this point, I should just be able to grab this and lift her out. Oh, and she's stuck. Come on. I remember she was a bit of a bit of a bitch to get in, so I'm pretty sure she's gonna be a bit of a cow to get out. Just give me a second here. Right, yes. There we go. So she was just getting hung up on this. Sticking on the uh, on the frame a little bit. But uh, a little bit of but a little bit of brute force and ignorance. And uh, and she came out. So now I've just got to get to these, uh, hang on, I need a, a digit to point with, I just need to get to these, these two bolts on either side of this, and this whole fan will come out and come forward, and we'll be able to have a look at it and see what the issue is. All right, so to remove the motor, what you do is you look for these marks in the fan, right? And then down in here, we have a little screw, so we can just loosen the screw, and just pop the fan blade off. Put that to one side, because we will want it again. And now we have free access into the motor and the two bolts that we need to get hold of. It turns out that they're 11 mil, which is handy. So let me just go ahead and loosen those and pull this out. Um, I have disconnected it. And now I need to give you the standard warning. If you're gonna play with the car's electrical pieces, just go ahead and disconnect the, uh, the ground from the battery or the live one or the other just to make sure that you don't short anything out and fry the battery. But you know what, I'll just slide this motor out here. And bingo bongo, there is our fan motor. So, rah, these things are really cool. They're very simply put together. And usually this seam here it's just a pinched seam, so if you're feeling really brave, what you can do is pull this apart, pull the seam apart. You'll have to pull this out. I can't remember what it's called. Is it the stator? I can't remember what it is, but this is the bit that spins. <laughs> the bit that spins, that's good enough for me. Um, there is a, you'll see the little, this little guy here. You have to spread that and lift it off. And that will allow you to take this top plate off or the bottom plate, I can't remember. And then you can get inside the motor and clean it up and try and repair it if you want. But the chances of you actually cleaning it and repairing it to the point where it's actually going to function properly again are, you know, pretty slim. And getting this thing back together again, because obviously you've got inside here, you've got some pretty, pretty strong magnets. And the center of this pin here, there are some pretty strong magnets. So getting the two back together again, definitely a trick. Um, but I might just have a play with this. I'm, gonna, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and buy a new fan motor, but I'm gonna have a quick play with this and see what, uh, what the inside looks like. All right, so this is our old motor. Sorry, uh, I just took a little lunch break. So mm, 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 mm. I had a uh, sourdough hamburger and some fries because I went to the store and got some parts. So this is our old motor, and uh, I told the guy, you know, 19, oh, what is this, 19, 1976 MGB, and of course he looked up at his system and he's like, <laughs> no, uh, and he didn't have, uh, you know, he didn't know about uh, too much uh, about non-OEM replacement parts, because uh, obviously the computer system couldn't tell him anything, but I, I did kind of pressure him a little bit. Uh, so he went off and he had a look around and he did end up finding this guy. Okay. Now this guy is not an exact match. But it's damn close. Ruah. So this is the, uh, the guy that I brought, brought home with me. <clears throat> As it were. Now, you know, it's... The radius on it is not quite the same, but I can probably rig myself up a uh, a system just to hold it in place. 
but this is the important bit. This is about the same, this is within a few micrometers, I think, about the same size as this. So I can get the fan on here and it does have, it does have a little dead spot or a little flat spot so I can uh, get it purchased with that screw. Uh, the only difference is obviously I will need to replace the ends because <laughs> they don't match. Mm -hmm. And it does have uh, this, these flanges on it, which actually, if I think about it, what I might be able to do is bend them over and use them just to fill in the gap that, because this isn't exactly the same size, so I can just bend them over and use them to fill in that gap. So as long as I bend them uh, backwards, <laughs> yeah, as long as I bend them backwards that way, they should fill in the gap. We'll have a look see. I'll look at that in a few. What I want to do is look at this and see what's going on. And I showed the guy in the store the same thing here. That's not good. That's part of my issue. So let's pull this apart and see what we see on the inside. Because that'll be interesting, I think. Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Right, so we got the spring clip off. Uh, it kind of suffered a minor trauma in the... Uh, in the fight, but we'll take care of that later. Uh, so we've got the two bolts on the back. Now they've loosened up a little bit. Let's, uh, I'm trying to do this while holding the camera. It's actually quite fun. So there's one. Okay, and there's the other. Notice how that was being pulled in. I think that's probably the magnets. Okay, so now we should be able to get this apart. All right, there we go. And that, well, that did put up a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a struggle, but uh, okay, so there's the inside. And as you can see, there's a lot of grease and... Oh, hang on. There we go. This guy here. See that little chap there? It's a little piece of copper from one of the windings. It's actually come loose. broken away from the winding and uh, hang on let me just turn autofocus back on that may help me here so okay there we go so this little guy here was stuck across there okay so that is why this does not run anymore and I don't think I think there's a way to, because you can see where the winding originally was. It was originally around and through here, so the other end of him would be buried, buried in this lot somewhere. So there's definitely no repair available for that. <laughs> so this is actually a Kaputski. Which is a bit of a shame, actually. That would be why I was having so many issues with it. Unless, of course, wait a minute. Let me see if I can't spot the other side of it here. And it looked like, actually, it ran for a little while. You can see... There you go. You can kind of sort of see that it's worn there. And you can see the mark against that. Let's see if there's anything on the inside of, of this as well. Eh, I can't really see any marks on the inside there. You can see the two the two magnet. There's the one magnet. And there's the other magnet. They actually seem pretty weak to be honest because this came out pretty pretty easy. But uh, yeah I think uh, I think this is uh, this is Kaputski. Like in all kinds of ways. Because, like I said, the other end of this would be up in here somewhere. Well, look of it. Yeah, you can see how loose that's become there. This should be nice and tight. So there is actually no repair for that. I mean, there probably is. I could probably take it off to a guy who could unwind it, fix it, and wind it back up again. 
but I myself don't see the other end of that uh, that coil. So there's no point in me trying to continue with this. But that's what the inside of my radiator fan looks like there. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and we will check this one. Let's see if we can get the fan on there and see if we can get it mounted in the car and then we'll worry about these uh, end pieces here. Okay, so I've got the new terminals on the end. I've got the opposites that I can wire up to my, whatever you want to call it on the other end of that, that uh, Frankenstein stuff over there, which I am contributing to in my own personal way. I've bent the flanges over, so I have invalidated my warranty. And I have got the fan on this thing here, pointing the correct direction. See, an arrow pointing that way. There's an arrow on the fan somewhere, pointing the same way. So, we should be good to go. All I've got to do is get this mounted in the vehicle, which is here. I've just got to get it mounted in there and then tighten the bolts down and test it and make sure it works before I put the radiator back in again. Okay, so now we've got our new motor in place and it's nice and secure. It's not going anywhere. Uh, there's plenty of room for the fan to turn. Uh, I just noticed that the fan blade actually isn't straight either, which is a little concerning, but it will, it will be okay. Now my biggest issue is I know which way around these go to the motor, red and black. These are the old hookups. Um, so if you know which way around these are, write in on a postcard to, uh, you know, wherever you want to write to, because it sure as hell isn't going to help me now. Um, <laughs> so I've got to trim these down, cut them off, put these new connectors on, but I've got to figure out which way around these go. Look at that. Two fan blades now. Make sure they're blowing in the right direction. Yep. Yep. Nice. All right. So now we just got to put everything back together again. Oh my God. Okay, that actually went back in a lot easier. I, uh, I just kind of adjusted this little piece of uh, this little shroud of metal down here. I adjusted it with a uh, pair of vice grips and some uh, brute force and ignorance. So now the radiator actually just kind of slips in and out quite easily now. <laughs> well, let me go ahead and get this secured down with all those bolts that I used before. So I've got these. So I've got to put one through this side tighten it down and then tighten it down from this side so this bracket holds it in place and then I've got to do the bottom ones so just give me a minute to get that done well swear to god I have bought at least 10 funnels in my lifetime so far can I find any of them right now no I can't um but what I have got is a soda bottle or a pop bottle or whatever the hell you want to call this. So I am just going to cut this off across here, remove the bit lid and turn this into another funnel. And then I can just stick it on you know, my tube here, my little flexi tube, stick it on the end and I can just fill my radiator from there. Ah, good grief. All right, so that's one model in and I'm just using regular uh, pre-diluted antifreeze slash coolant um, because I can't be asked to deal with finding my own uh, uh, water. Uh, obviously, because you know you don't want to put tap water in your engine because it's not it's not clean. <laughs> you don't want to do that because it's going to gunk up. You know you'll get uh, algae growing in there. You'll get uh, corrosion occurring because you know the water is is not uh, what's that word distilled. That's the word I was looking for. It's not distilled. So okay, that's that one dealt with. So I'm going to put this in there. The reason I'm going to put this in there actually is more because of the bottom bit here. Corrosion protection. It'll stop pieces from, uh, you know, from corroding and it'll stop uh, algae from forming and things just kind of sticking to the metal. So I want to put that in there and like, uh, just keep my, uh, keep my engine, my cooling system in a good state. 
So let me chuck that in there and then I will top off with the other bottle of coolant that I've got and we should be good. Alrighty, so I've got that additive put in there. I've got my hose hooked up again. I've got this topped off. What I'm just going to do is massage my hose. Ooh, uh, I want to try and push any extra air out that might be lingering. There we go, that should do the trick. And then I can just uh, call that it. The car is now back together again. I'll just stick this back on here. Make sure it's on nice and tight. All right, lots of clearance. Lots of air coming in. Yep. I can feel a breeze coming across here. That's good. That's what we want. And it looks like we're done. But I got one thing left to do. So if you said clean your tools up, you're kind of right because you should do that every single time. Tidy your tools away, put them back where they live. That way you can find them next time. Another one. I'm going to look up and see if I can get a core return or at least a, you know, take the old motor back so it can be recycled. If I get money for it, cool. If I don't, meh. But there is one other thing that we need to take care of. As a responsible do-it-yourself car mechanic, wait, is that a real thing? I don't think that's a real thing. As a responsible do-it-yourselfer, I have a pan of used coolant. I need to dispose of that properly. I can't just pour it in the yard. So I'm just going to pour it in here and take it back to my local auto parts store who will dispose of it for me in a responsible manner. So I just got to put that in there using my 11th funnel. Um, but I did very quickly check this and I'm not seeing any anything overly alarming. Um, there's a couple of little things in there that were there beforehand because this was an old, uh, what was this? Oh, a Christmas wrapper holder, so. Was the first thing I could grab that would work. <laughs> so yep, all I've got to do is dispense this into this jug and take it to the auto parts store. So thank you for joining me on another strange uh, MGB slash Nissan car care thing. Um, it was definitely interesting. I learned a lot along the way and some of the stuff I already knew. <laughs> I wasn't actually aware that the radiator was going to get stuck because of that piece of uh, bodywork but that's fine we got that taken care of i just bent it out of the way and i bent it back again anyway that's it for the minute thanks for joining me on this rather weird video and i'll see you anon